Welcome back to this second video on the Weebly ePortfolio creation. In the previous video, we created our account, we created our ePortfolio site, and we chose a theme. We published it to make it live, and we took a look at it, and, and here we are right here looking at our ePortfolio, and again, there is nothing on it because we haven't added any content or we haven't really created a page or menu structure or any of that which we will do but now that I'm taking a look at my ePortfolio or at least taking a look at what it's going to kind of look like on the web I, I really don't like this background image here this image of boats and we can and that there's the menu structure right there but we're, we're going to customize that and, and tweak it. But let's 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 do something about this background with this with this sailboat image here. And if I come back into the Weebly in the what we can call the like site editor display, where you know we we have our functionality to create things. I'm looking at it and I see that there's a few things up here at the top. These are the kind of categories pertaining to what we can do with this ePortfolio. We've got the build tab where it has the elements that we can click and drag into the ePortfolio, which we'll take a look at in the future. We've got the design where we can do things like change the theme, change the font, change the background and all that. So while we're here, let's go ahead and do that. Change, uh, I don't like this sailboat thing, right? So let's change the background. And if I click on that change background button, this window opens up and it's telling me that this is all of the possible backgrounds I can have for this ePortfolio. And as I'm looking through them, I'm, I'm, I'm really not liking the fact of having an image in the background at all. I don't really understand how that reflects my work or how that reflects anything uh, in regards to my ePortfolio. So let's, let's get out of here. Let's cancel that. Let's come in and let's change our theme. And again, I, I, I'm kind of doing this not only because I don't like the image, but just to you know reiterate and to prove to you guys that at any point in the future, you can go in and change your theme. So let's do that. I'm, I'm going to look for something, try to find something even more simpler. Than, than what I had before and this one called highlighter it's looking pretty pretty plain and pretty simple so I'm going to we can preview it first take a look at it and see what it looks like we, we got some more options we can have looks like we can have a back background we can have green on white green on black and so forth and I'll probably go with the green on white background and I'm going to select choose and so it's going to change I'm just going to throw away that old theme and it's going to uh, put in this new theme and it's really a simple process so we're ready to go with that now that we've got a theme that we're happier with we can start to think about adding in content um, adding in pages and stuff like that so the first thing that we probably want to do is add the pages that we are going to have in our ePortfolio. And if you notice, one of these tabs up here says pages. And it looks like by default, Weebly creates three pages for you. It creates a home page, which is pretty nice. It creates an about page and it creates a contact page. And really, those are probably all three kind of pages you were thinking of in advance that you would you would need on your ePortfolio. So it's nice that they go ahead and automatically create those. I'll take a quick second to suggest to you that before you create your ePortfolio, you think about a site map. And let's take a quick look at what a site map is. And let's try to find something very uh, a simpler one. So here, here's one to, to maybe look at. So a site map is essentially just a sketch or a drawing of the layout and flow of your website. And typically, websites start with a home page. Then you'll have some sort of menu structure that says, you know, what what kind of pages are inside of your site, and maybe those pages have sub pages. So that would be this next layer or next row of 
of sites down here. So by looking at it, you get a visual sense of how the site is organized. And I can't, I can't suggest enough how, how just taking five minutes and sketching out a site map on a piece of paper with a pencil can really save you a lot of time when it comes time for you to actually create your site. Knowing ahead of time what you need is going to be very advantageous uh, for you. So with that being said, let's come back in into the site builder, the site editor, and let's take a look. Like I said, we've got three pages already and I probably want more than that, right? We need to be able to showcase our work. So let's uh, say that, you know, I am a, I, I, I want to do photojournalism, so I take lots of uh, photography, lots, lots of pictures. So I'm gonna create a new page and I'm gonna name it photography. And it gives us some options as to what we want to have in our page. I'll be honest, there's quite a there's quite a few different things. We we want our pages to be visible to the public for sure. You can take a look at all these other uh, all these other options and and make any adjustments that you want to in the future. I'm not going to worry about it just for the sake of this uh, example, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. But I do want to make sure I've got my page name photography, and. I can come now back into build and starting start to add stuff, but I'm not going to worry about the, that either. We'll do that uh, actually adding content uh, in another video. This this video is more about just creating the pages. So I've got a site called Photography. That's great. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to publish it. Again, I know that I didn't add anything into it yet, but we will do that in the future. And again, we're going to get the confirmation that it has been properly created. So now if I open up and take a look at my site in a new tab, I will see photography added into the menu that is up here at the top. So let's keep going because I have my site map. I know that I have more pages that I want to make. I'm going to come back in the pages tab. And I'm going to create another one and it's going to be another standard page. And I also have lots of video work that I want to be able to share with potential employers. So I'm going to create a page where I can where I can add in that video and I'm going to click publish and I'm going to get the confirmation again just for the sake of repetitiveness and getting it all done right away I'm going to come back into pages I'm going to create a new one another created and I know that I have lots of writing that I've done I, I, I'm, I've done a lot of uh, newspaper articles I've done a, a lot of online um, journal publications so I definitely want to be able to share the things that I've written so I'm going to create a page called writing and I am going to go ahead and I'm going to publish that and now let's say you know that you start to have a lot of things up here in your menu your menu Get, is getting to be filled with pages that you've created and you want to clean up that menu structure in some sort uh, or clean it up in some way so it doesn't look as that so there's not as many options it just looks cleaner and, and slimmer so how can we do that we can do that by nesting pages inside of the menu structure so I'm gonna come back to my pages and I'm gonna say to myself you know photography video and writing these are my these are my actual pages with my actual work on them. They are a little bit different than info about me. So how can I group these together in in one place so that someone viewing my website can can go to one tab called you know maybe student work and then see all the different types of student work that I have. So to do that, I'm going to create like a, a filler page first. I'm going to call it student work and We'll come in and add content again, just like all the other ones, but I'll go ahead and publish it. And the reason why I can do that now is when I am looking at my pages, I can now, if you notice when I hover on them, they, it kind of lights up and you get these, these three little bars. It kind of is telling me that I can do something with them. So this is how I can arrange the menu structure. I can click it and I can drag it. So I'm gonna take student work and I'm going to drag it up after about me and you see that it rearranges the order of them and so I'm going to say 
I want student work to be up there, and of course I want my I want my cat my subcategories up underneath that. And if you notice, as I'm rearranging it now, and I'm kind of dragging it over to the right a little bit, and What that does is it's saying, that's telling me visually that these three pages now are indented to the right a little bit under student work. So they are going to be subcategories. And contact or contact me is probably the last page that I want to have. Everything else, you know, homepage about student work. Oh, there is one more page that we, we probably want to have on our ePortfolio. So let's go ahead and create that one too. And it's a resume or a CV page. So I'm going to publish that. And one last time, I'm going to come in and, um, you know, resume I probably want to have like maybe after about me. So again, I can organize, arrange, uh, rearrange my pages and I can make pages sub pages of other pages all from this pages tab right here and if I publish my ePortfolio now and take a look at it we should see the we should see the pages organized in the order that we had them and you'll notice when I when I hover over student work I get a drop down of the three sub pages my photography, my writing, and my video, which really helps to kind of clean up the ePortfolio, the menu structure, and makes it more intuitive and just kind of helps you, you know, keep it organized. So we are happy with that. It is looking good. We've got the pages that we want and we've got the menu the way that we want it. So in the next video, let's take a look at actually adding in some content into our ePortfolio. We'll see you then.